Now let's calculate the amplitude. All right. <laughs> Sheldon? 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 It's annoying when you do it. I brought pizza. Oh, thank you. I have been working pretty hard. I, I could use a break. What's that? Uh, yeah, that is an experiment to see how many parallelograms I could draw while holding my breath. Is that where you blacked out? No, actually, that's where I blacked out. And this? That is a list of all the different types of natural disasters. Firequake? I made that one up. Which I shouldn't have because now I'm scared of it. I thought you were working on actual science. I am. I'm trying to come up with a new approach to dark matter, but people keep distracting me. At first, my mother kept answering the phone when I called, even though she knew I was busy. <laughs> and now you show up with my favorite shape of food, a circle made of triangles served in a square box. Maybe I'll just eat this in the laundry room. No, no, wait. You don't have to go. It's as long as you sit quietly and don't say anything. Fine. <clears throat> Mm. Good. Mm. Are you mocking me? <laughs> and then I was thinking about inventing a new dark matter particle to evade the omega baryon constraints, but that just seems like something anyone could come up with. Uh, agreed. <clears throat> you know what's blowing my mind? Somebody thought about putting cheese in this crust. I just wish I could find something that excites me. Y you do understand that crust doesn't normally come with cheese in it. Okay, all right, look. What got you excited about dark matter in the first place? Well, I left string theory, which I've been working on for a long time, and everyone was talking about how cool dark matter was, and I thought, well, sure, I'll give that a whirl. So it's your rebound science. What's that? Well, not the science you spend the rest of your life with, but the one you use to make yourself feel pretty again. Well, if I'm being honest, I never forgot about string theory. It's remarkable. It's the closest we've come to a theory of everything, something even Einstein couldn't figure out. Well, if he couldn't figure it out, maybe it's just wrong. <laughs> But it's so elegant. I mean, look, string theory posits that the fundamental particles we see in three dimensions are actually strings embedded in multidimensional space-time. Interesting. <laughs> so that would mean that... Can't do this by myself, buddy. <laughs> So it's sort of like a guitar string, but instead of making an actual sound, each vibration is a different particle. Precisely. And when you express it in 11 dimensions, Einstein's relativity equations pop out. Does that sound like a coincidence? It does not. Yep. <laughs> That's what I think. So, so did we do it? Did we just solve string theory? Oh, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but this is not the sort of thing we can figure out in a night. People have been stuck on this for decades. What? Decades? Really? It's, it's a string. How hard can it be? It's, it's straight, it's in a loop, it gets knotted up with other strings. Well, actually, there are no knots in anything greater than four dimensions. Well, unless we get around that by considering them as sheets. You know, topologically speaking, that has a lot of interesting possibilities. See? How long did that take me? Like a minute? <laughs> I thought you were getting us dinner. Sorry, I had to stop at Sheldon's and help him solve string theory. <laughs> what? Yeah, it turns out the answer's not. That's cute, but you can't have knots in more than four dimensions. Mm, you can if you consider them sheets. Good night. <laughs>